secondary high power mode we see here we're in low so I put this on here to to trigger that one for on off and sometimes if you're lucky off if you're lucky but usually vibrate <laughs> anyway the next one is that that terminal there to uh, one of those and uh, that'll kick start the high power mode but on there and now you hear the harmonic coming in. Well just kind of way up. That's what the speaker's seeing. Uh, most speakers are in parallel right now. Off the outer out, outer 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 two terminals of Three transforms pair. These are all in series with the outer refs. Positive and negative. The saturation, control saturation power is going to the center tab on this one and the center tab on that one. And then we're utilizing all three wires from the 44 volt secondary so we get the center. And ironically, any one of these wires get removed, the effect stops. red wires on the transformers here, the top, the first terminal, the first one here, and the first one on this one, are all to be connected, but they're not connected to anything. So they're just acting as a series connection here, and as you see, the that's what I tap, that's what I use to arc over here and trigger the secondary reaction. So we get upwards to 500 volts DC being rectified across the outer two. So I'm taking that terminal on the other side of the capacitor there and that terminal there, as you see here and here, going up to the rectifier and the spark gap. Uh, so the interesting thing is the spark gap will then can then be made to fire. I killed it. See, we're down to 300 volts rectified. I kick it here. So the spark gap's wanting to go. So just varying quite a bit of power input now.
hook that up, there's an instant dip down as you hear. This switch is held closed, that reaction, the highest disturbance and what sounds like a low 30 hertz uh, harmonic, subharmonic that is coming out, um, is allowing this rectifier to accumulate over almost 600 volts for that gap, or for that condenser, I mean, when the gap's not able to fire. I think that's a, that one was a 300 volt breakdown, so it never quite got up to 300 each time it fired. I have some ones that are 90s, but they should go faster, but man, they heat up real bad. That's a lot of arcing. scoop very X off Ooh, I unplugged it it slowed down but it's still climbing <laughs> I'll plug the very X back in climb a little faster hmm. That's strange. Doesn't seem to have any effect on it. Anyway. This is the MagAmp 2.0. 3.0, because it's got three transformers. <laughs> the diodes aren't, I'm not using diodes here anymore. Um, I don't know. I understand how the mag amp got gain from the two diodes, but the vibrations, the harmonics come much easier without the diodes. And Once I apply the DC voltage here, the saturation really kicks in, allowing what can't really be, I don't know if it's the power supply driving the speakers at that point, 
or it's the power supply providing the current so that the modulation from the the mag wall vibrating here I can't hold that vibrating here um, is modulating the current flow that's happening in the circuit otherwise it would be straight DC right so So it's kind of like reverse driven, so where traditionally we would have the power wanting to, you know, saturate those cores and allow the mag amp itself to conduct more current through it and, you know, dissipate more power. But in this case, the mag amp is acting as a signal source, a modulating, a modulator driver, and an amplitude modulated driver. And it's affecting, and it's it's displacing the current in the secondary circuit because of the saturation varying with the 60 hertz amplitude modulation. Where's the voltage coming from? 600 volts. Why? Without this, when it's in low power state, you know, before if when I'm lucky enough to have it turned off, I mean on, but it's not vibrating in the primary state. Oh, maybe 170 to 120, I don't remember exactly, um, across these outer two. This is only the 44 volt tap. This is on, this is the irony. This is a 240 volt toroid, okay, so it's got the windings. As you can see here, you could hook up 240 across the outer two and join it together so that there's two in series and Still get the expected output and that's what I've done except I'm not driving it with 240 I'm only driving it with 120 with both of the primaries in series There's one five microfarad capacitor as opposed to the three uh, Well, it's not in that picture, but Anyway, I have one there so I could get even more current, but it doesn't seem to be a, a need for current here you know, yeah, I get a little more volume output. Doesn't affect saturation, but anyway, this is a it's supposed to be a 110 to 44 step down, and yeah, I suppose if I have them both in series, I'm putting it's almost stepping up some. It's helping to step up because there's more. I don't know. In theory, you think it would step down because there's more primary wraps to secondary wraps, but the voltage on this secondary is not 44 volts. As we've seen, it's 70 to 250, 300 or more, 350 maybe by the time it rectifies and gets 600. It's got to be 350 AC here. And I had the meter on there to show you uh, to see what it was doing before. Um, I don't want to unhook it, but it was reading probably about 250 to 350 on here. Because I could put the spark gap directly across these uh, on the AC output, and it would also arc um, much faster, but less intense, I guess you could say, across this point and this point here, as opposed to here. Here it's a much brighter flash, and it's slower, um, but it's it's tuned to the beat frequency. If you noticed, when I varied the voltage on this side of the circuit. And saturate these cores more the as it comes up to a point of resonance with the primary circuit the, the the spark gap stops firing because the voltage I'm only able to rectify upwards of 300 maybe 300 volts um, it's not enough to charge that capacitor and fire that spark gap this rate of 300 volts or so um, but as soon as the secondary reaction is started and we apply more current through here it tightens that field up and I believe effectively raises its 
naturally resonant frequency. If we think of mag uh, a, uh, a, a region or a saturation of magnetic flux as mass, think of it as mass and having a naturally reson resonant vibratory frequency, when that fourth harmonic is vibrating from high power mode along with the one and five or maybe one in the octave or sometimes one five and octave anyway the the voltage there climbs upwards uh, you know 350 volts or more and I can get rectified 500 it's much easier to to tune it and to get the octaves and the other harmonics that I can hear coming out of the speakers. And the speakers don't have to be on these capacitors anymore. Previously I had a speaker here or a speaker here. This wasn't hooked up here. Um, and then that speaker would act like a tank with that capacitor and that one and or this one and that would allow much more current to flow through here. But it's not necessary because the output the speaker here can be directly modulated from the mag amp as a signal. So the mag amp can be used to create a bass frequency and then a one quarter wave harmonic of that frequency, up from that frequency, the major third. It can be slightly variated to pit to change the pitch, to bend it up or down to try to hit other harmonics and even a low 30 hertz harmonic which is what seems to drive this output in the, the highest amount it's ever been to almost 600 volts when this is vibrating at the, the 120 what I think is what we're actually hearing and then the, this originally this transformer was vibrating at a quarter wave and now I'm wondering it's hard to tell which ones are doing what at this point, so I'm still trying to figure that out, but I'm presuming that these are, I would like to see these independently vibrating at different harmonic multiples, and I think that may have something to do with the capacitor in the middle and needing to be different sizes, or I'm not sure, but there is massive reflective standing stationary wave energy that is occurring bouncing back and forth between these two cores and when it's in when it's in tune the output is, is as strong as it could possibly be you know that I've gotten so far so, I think we need, the next thing I think we need is a crossover system. I'd like to individually take these as outputs and have a type of crossover that will take the lows to one and so forth. That way I can break out three different speakers and hopefully get the three different pitches from each one in each one which would be pretty cool it will make it more distinct to hear um, and it might make it might even make the circuit more efficient that way so 600 volts from 44 I thought it was I thought I had voltage multiplying or doubling or tripling going on with those two diodes figured that had to be the answer why all that extra voltage was coming from but just disproved that by pulling them out of there there's no voltage doubling circuit here there's maybe a reactive resonant cavity that can be magnetically tuned to the perfect quarter wavelength of the source frequency by the magnetic tuning and ironically this would be a center tap point of this wire as a conductor 
So it's interesting. It's very interesting. If that's the case, this would be... I don't know if that would be a quarter or if that would actually be a half wavelength then, because then the quarter wavelength should probably be if this was the transmission line. I don't know if it's a transmission line or not, but never ends. My bad game's bigger than yours. He's getting warm. This guy's getting really warm. Really warm, yes. So much for a power factor and efficiency. I can't get back to that state that I had before. Even with the original setup. Well, to be fair, I used three capacitors before. I'm only using one now, so that may have a lot to do with it since we're using more current through there. But... Stay tuned.